Hi, my name's Karen. I'm studying vet nursing certificate four, and this is my grooming video. Um, this is Missy. She's a ten-year-old Angora rabbit, so she's uh, also blind in both eyes, got cataracts on each side. Um, and I'll just show you a few things of what we would do with her, uh, with the listing of on the the requirements for the video. Um, brushing, we would on a long-haired bunny. Most of the time, with a long-haired rabbit, you'd actually clip just to keep them cool, and through, especially through some months. Um, but with brushing, you need, you need a, a wire-toothed comb brush, ones that are quite bendy and point, uh, that actually you can print, print, press in so they don't pr um, actually scratch the rabbit or anything like that. So if you do press them in, it, it does bounce a little bit. So what you do with this brush is um, part the fur, so it's just easier to sort of part the fur and brush so you can actually demat any mats that are in there, so they sort of, on a particularly angora um, rabbits, they do get quite matted around their bottoms. So you can sort of try and brush out the mats. Um, we do find that it's a little bit more time consuming than it is to clip, which I tend to find that it's easier just to clip the, the mats off a long-haired rabbit than to actually try and brush them out because rabbits become quite stressed with too much handling and also they become stressed with too much grooming because their skin is quite sensitive and you can actually injure their skin if you press too hard or you spend too much time and also the fur can come out and cause bald spots and redness on the skin. So basically that's sort of what you can do with, with rabbits and, and brushing. So you, can, you can sort of focus on around the back of the neck, it's a bit easier. But as you can tell she's also she's getting bored pretty fast. So they'll be sort of, um, I'd, I'd do the clipping with these more so than I would do with a brush. Uh, with other mats you can actually use scissors to cut things out but with a rabbit and their very fine skin it's usually best not to cut use scissors around a rabbit because they can move their heads around too much. You could accidentally cut the skin and you can accidentally hurt the rabbit by when they move too much or something like that. So it's usually always better to use clippers I think than, um, than any of the brushes and the combs but you can use those if you need to. Now, um, if you're cleaning ears, um, particularly with a long-haired lock rabbit, they can end up with um, infection in their ears. So you can use one of these uh, scopes to have a look inside and see what's going in down, down further down the ears. But um, we know with Missy that she does have a little bit of wax in her ears. So we use a product, Oto Flush, which is um, a deep, sort of a degreaser, I guess, but without causing any sort of it's quite, sens it's quite sensitive on rabbits, so it doesn't cause any sort of irritation down the ears. Basically, it's just usually about 0.3 of a millimetre. You've got to hold the ear up so it doesn't, she won't shake it out, and then give her some reassurance that it's all going to be okay. Give it a bit of a massage for about, whoops, a couple of minutes. Sorry about that, Missy. She doesn't like her ears being done. Yeah. <laughs> give it a bit of a massage because it gets all sort of around the lower part of the ear canal. Let it shake it out. There you go. And then with cotton buds, we can actually just um, clean out the inside of her ear without too much of an issue. And there's actually not that much going on down there anyway, which is really good. She does have a little lump on her ear, which hasn't, has been there for quite a long time and has been checked as well. So you would do that to both ears. Yeah, you could do this one as well. It's not too bad. I guess we need. Oops, I know, I know, I know, I know. She is 10, so we don't tend to want to stress her out too much. And being blind, she gets a little bit upset about things. Hey, okay. And she could also scratch her own ear if she does that sort of thing and injure it. So, yeah, it's not so bad. There's nothing coming out, which is good. Uh, eyes, she has, even though she's got cataracts in her eyes, they're actually very clear. So there's nothing happening on her eyes at the moment, so she's actually quite good. Um, but if we did need to clean them for her, just a wet tissue is a nice soft option. And with rabbits they do, quite a few rabbits end up with sort of a bit of a weepy eye, just from either their tear ducts being blocked or um, uh, if there was dental issues or uh, other infections inside the mouth or somewhere that's actually causing um, eye problems. You can just wipe away any sort of... Um, Sort of sticky discharge with a wet tissue. So she's all she's all good. There you go. Uh, next is nail trimming. With nails on a rabbit, you would tend to use these small little sort of guillotine scissors. They've got a round, they've sort of got a rounded shape to them, and that means that when the nail's in there, it's not going to be pressed down and squashed. 
it will be it goes with the shape of the nail and then as you close it 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 will cut all sides at the same time so it doesn't cause any pressing down on the onto the nail itself. So when you look at Missy's toenails, they are a little bit on the long side. And so the quick as you can see is about there. So in the dark part is where the blood flow is and the, the other part up the top here is her actual nail. So that's safe to actually trim. So when we do that we would cut just above, give it enough space so you're not going to go too close to the quick. Particularly with dark nails it's a bit hard to tell sometimes. So it's always better to um, err on the side of caution than it is to think you're going to trim them shorter than you might need to. Because they're a bit long. But um, And on a rabbit they've also got a little tiny whoops, little dew claw type nail up here as well which sometimes gets forgotten because people don't know they're there. So there are five nails on the front feet and four nails on the back feet which are looking pretty bad, but she is 10, don't forget. There we go. I oh, know. There you go, sweetie. They're looking a bit old. Hang on. And that one's a good one to show, because you can see the quick up to there, where the pink part is. If you went below that, that's where it's obviously going to bleed. So you go above that line. And we'll just do that. Oops. With that last one then as you can see with the guillotine scissors it just cuts around the nail and leaves a nice shape without being pressing down on the nail so we'll do the other ones later uh, and now we're going to do some clipping with a, with a rabbit uh, and, lo and long-haired rabbit in particular clippers are great this one is a wild uh, two-speed clipper and uh, it's, a, it's, it's plugged in obviously it's not a, not a full clip there's more, more power in a, in a plugged in um, Clipper over there, they're going to cause a tough clip from most of the time anyway. So this one put on a double on the two charge there. And from doing the clipping on here, you would start around about the back of her neck there. So that's the sort of the softer fur that you can clip. And with gentle motions, you can clip down to the rest of her body. We won't give her like a very close clip because we're just trying to make her comfortable and take all the all the knots out. Some of the some of the knots are very close to her skin though, so wherever those are is where you will have to trim them down to the skin line. Okay, so we would do that all over the body. I won't do it for the whole video because she'll be watching it for a really long time. It's best to have some experience and some practice in doing clipping with a rabbit first because of the fact that if you pulled up too tight and you clipped, she could also clip their skin. So sometimes you can't tell that that's skin and that's fur. And so what you need to do is know the shape of your bunny and to know where you're going down the end of the body because you don't want to cause any clipper rash as well. Clippers also do heat up after a certain period of time so you do have to stop and then start it up a little bit later down the track or change blades. So I won't go any further, this will take a long time. So we won't continue on and I'll do that all later. Many hours later. <laughs> and uh, another thing about rabbits as well, particularly long-haired bunnies, is they do get a lot of seeds caught in their fur. And so you can sort of around here, most of the time, it's the, the worst parts are going to be under the chin, which is where you can see the seeds get caught up in there. And that's just, you know, a regular thing for long-haired rabbits. So that's a comfort thing to remove those. So we'll do that later as well. Another thing that they have is very thick fur around their bottoms and this is also where they collect a few seeds as well. And this is where most of the mats occur down here. Another part is where we would clip as well would be if we had a, a, a problem with um, diet, if the rabbit was having problems with say urine scald or um, had a dirty bottom from whatever problem food it was for having, we could also clip under the tummy here and do a bit of a what we call a Brazilian at work and we clip around all the way around the legs, up to the top here, down around this leg here, and then pretty much all the way around the bottom area as well. So 